All right, hello guys. So today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use the two universal curettes. So today I'm gonna be showing you the SC1314. This is the universal Colombian curette. And then we also have the H5 Barnhart. So uh, the indications for both of these instruments is to use it on subgingival calculus in small to moderate amounts. And the contraindications for these two instruments is don't use these instruments on green calculus because of the underlying demineralized enamel. So uh, next I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I will describe the parts of these instruments. So we have the handle right over here. These are the shanks of the instrument. And then these right here, what we'll be using on the tooth is the working end. Same thing goes for this one. We have the handle, we have the shank, and then we have the working ends right over here. Okay, so I'm gonna start using the Colombian on the posterior teeth. So I'm gonna find my SC1314. Let's see if this is the correct one. I'm gonna, you can come behind me if you have one. Okay, I'm gonna, right here, try to do it like that. So I'm gonna make sure I find the correct working end by placing the instrument in interproximally. And I can see that the V is pointing distally. And this always helps me very easily without too much of a hassle. So when I insert the instrument, I'm gonna make sure that I start at the distal line angle because I like to work distally first. So I'm gonna start right over here on this tooth and I'm gonna close the instrument and then I'm gonna insert it while it's closed and we're doing this at zero to 40 degrees and then we're gonna open at 60 to 80 degrees and we're gonna start working distally and we're gonna make sure that we're using our hands and rocking it as opposed to using our fingers to practice proper ergonomics, so. I'm gonna work right over here like that. And then I'm also gonna do a molar tooth. Although I should have started with this tooth. I'm gonna to start at the distal line angle. I'm gonna start rocking. And we can see that we're taking out the calculus. And we're gonna end up interproximally. Same thing right over here. We're gonna insert, open, activate. Right there like that. Steph, is it focused? Mm -hmm. It's not focused. It's a focus note. We're gonna end up interproximally. We're gonna do the same thing for the lower right. Make sure it's focused on what I'm doing, okay? And then the same thing for this tooth right over here. I'm gonna flip it over for this quadrant, I mean. We're gonna practice proper fulcrum in. We're gonna insert its V to the D. This is perfect. So we're gonna start right over here. We're gonna insert, open, activate with the toe third of the instrument. And I'm gonna fulcrum. Again, rocking. And then that's perfect right over there. And then I'm gonna work mesially, just like that. End up interproximally. I'm gonna do the same thing for this tooth right over here. I'm gonna insert, open, activate. I'm gonna try my best to stay subgingivally. Look at that, we got a big chunk right over there coming off. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, distal line angle, stay subgingivally using the toe third of the instrument. We're gonna rock and roll right over here. We're gonna end up interproximally. I'm also gonna do the same thing for the left side. Is it focused? Make sure it's focused. We're gonna do the same thing over here. You can come to this side and record. Try not to bring me in. Make sure it's focused on what I'm doing, okay? All right. Sorry, little brother's behind the camera. This is the only help that I had available to me. So we're gonna do the same thing right over here. We're gonna do V to the D right there I'm gonna start over here at the distal line angle I'm gonna fulcrum and I usually like to fulcrum on the opposite side of whichever surface I'm working on for the posteriors and I'm gonna go in using the toe third I'm gonna rock and roll and end up into approximately same thing on this side Let's see we're taking off pieces Ends up into approximately. Insert, open, toe third. Rock and roll. Make sure we put proper pressure on our fulcrum when we need to. And same thing. All right. 
Now we're going to do it for the lower left. Right, we can see that we have a missing tooth right over here, so I'm going to have to fulcrum a bit farther away. We're going to find the correct working end. I'd have to flip the instrument over over here. V is pointing distally once you put it in proximally. And I'm going to insert, open, activate. Seth, is it focused? Mm -hmm. Flip it around, insert, open, activate. At 60 to 80 degrees once again. End up into approximately. Now we can do it right over here for this premolar tube. I'm gonna insert, open, activate. Same thing. Start back at the distal line angle, make sure we hit every part. Insert opening and activating just like that perfect now i'm going to show you how to use the barn heart i'm going to be using this on the anterior teeth so for the top teeth i'm going to show you on numbers eight and seven so when i'm sitting at 12 o'clock position like i'm in right now technically I'm going to be working on the away surfaces, and I like to use the Pac-Man method. So I insert the instrument into proximally, in whichever way the Pac-Man is going, I have to go and follow that. So I'm going to, I'm realizing that this is the correct working end. I like to work at least one to two teeth away. I fulcrum on the incisal edge of those teeth, and then I insert, open, activate, being very careful to only use two thirds of the instrument over here. You have to roll almost immediately on the anterior teeth rocking. I end up into proximally. Same thing again. I'm going to start at the middle line. I'm going to work on the away teeth for the away surfaces. Fulcrum properly. And then here we have it. End up into proximally. I'm going to do the same thing for the mandibular teeth. No, wait, I'm sorry. Let me actually do the, the lingual surface surfaces of these teeth first. So I would do the same exact thing over here. We'd have to make sure that we are using the proper side. So I'm gonna start at the midline again. Is that physical focus? Mm -hmm. We're gonna fulcrum so that we end up into approximately. Starting at the midline again, make sure we have a proper fulcrum so we can contain, maintain proper control of our instrument. End up into approximately right there, just like that. I'm gonna do the same thing for the mandibular teeth. In fact, for this one, I'm going to sit as though I am in an eight o'clock position. Uh, you might want to come to this side over here. Try not to bring anything else. In. Okay, come closer. All right, so for this one, I'm gonna work right over here on these two teeth. I'm working on my torrid surfaces. So the Pac-Man needs to work as though it's coming towards me. We can see it coming in towards my direction. So here we are. We're gonna start right over here at the midline of the tooth. We're gonna properly fulcrum. It's a little more difficult because this patient has some very, Let's see, it kind of looks like crowding. It's just a very limited amount of space, but I'm still going to work towards myself. Right over here, end up interproximally. I'm going to do the same thing on the lingual surfaces for the mandibular teeth. We're going to flip the instrument, find the correct working angle right there. You can see there's a lot of buildup as there normally would be on real life teeth. Got it off right there. was a little bouncy. I'm going to try to have more control over this one. Stuff as a focus. We're going to start at the midline. Perfect. Right there. Try to stay subgingivally and work into end up interproximally. So these are again the two instruments that you would be using to remove subgingival calculus in small to moderate amounts. Hopefully I wasn't too messy with this video. I really apologize in advance if it was Professor Jennings. And I hope I get to see you soon again. Take care.